A Twilight Zone, 1959, Season 5, Episode 5. The last night of a jockey, you unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond is another dimension, dimension of sound, dimension of sight, dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You just coast over into the Twilight Zone. Yeah, this is it. This is Grady. Who? What paper? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you're the creep yeah, that I said creep. Yeah, I know who you are. I know who you are. Sure, I read your column. Every time I read, it makes me sick. I want you to use a stomach punch. Don't try and nuzzle up to me with that Mr. Grady stuff. Three years ago, you stuck in the, sh- in the sieve. Isn't me. I've nothing to do with the, the whole stoping. Nothing? You understand that? Uh huh. Sure, a couple of taps on the typewriter. I get 60 today suspension. You can talk pretty safe. Now you're 50 blocks away. If you were here in this room now, I'll scrape you off this, off the wall, put you in a cup. How does that grab you? This is a statement to the press, Grady, to the press, you think. You hyenas down there? Listen, and don't forget to spell the name correct. G R A D Y, you chump. You stupid rotten chump. Just an account of a couple fixes, huh? Big boys walk away with all the big dough. What well, do you walk away with, huh? A bag full change. What are you going to do now? I know what you do. You'll get a carriage to drive lovers through Central Park. Grady, you kill me. You will kill me, boy. Yes, you runt, you shrimp. What are you going to do now, pal? What can you do? The name is Grady. Five foot feet short. Your stockings and boots are slightly sorted offshoot. A good breed of humans who race horses. He happens to be one of the rotten apples, bruised and yellowed by dealing in dirt. The short man with short memory, forgotten that he worked for the squad of kings, helped it turn into a cesspool, used and misused by the two animal, by the two-legged animals who were hung around sporting events. So the day he's a Colosseum. So this, Grady, on his last night as a jockey, behind him a Hallelujah. A little park at Segatoria, rounding the flower turn and coming up fast on the rail is the twilight zone. How does the well, how goes the well, Mr. Brady? Who? What? Little tight the turns, bogged down and by muddy track. Who goes, how goes, goes it, Mr. Brady? It's a gag. It's a gag. Ah, it's a gag, huh? All right. Now, look, you made your point. Where are you? Where am I? And between the frontal lobes, Mr. Grady, what inside your head is so coolly nestled the grey convolutions? Convolutions? Just what is that supposed to mean? I'm inside your head, Mr. Grady. My head? How do you like it in there? Huh? How do you like it in there? You're comfortable? Huh? Excuse me for laughing. It's a funny question. Comfortable inside your head? It's like sleeping in the midst of a parade. The 42nd Street, noisy, crowded, uncomfortable. In fact, I'm sick of it. If you're sick of it, get out. If you're sick of it, get out of there. I wish I could. It would be much more comfortable being outside instead of being cooped up in that little brain of yours. Who are you? I'm your memory, your conscious, Miss Grady. Every one of your aspirations, recollections. I am every one of your failures and defeats. I swear the reefs of all your victories. I am what you call the alter ego. Ego? Big deal. Big deal. What do you want? I think the apt question would be, what is it you want? It is a better hot one. Huh? What do I want? I don't need a thing. What do you want? What do I want? Are you really as dumb? You really are a dumb little runt. That's what you call yourself, isn't it? Runt. Oh, is, oh was it shrimp? Why do you get out of here? How do I get out of here? You don't. You don't. You live with me. In fact, you might find me very interesting. I know how you very well, Mr. Brady. Is one fault that is it one fault that crosses your mind and not aware of? Is it one ugly recollection, one bitter little shame I'm not aware of? Bitter little shame? You don't mean me? Don't know me from from bear at war? I got no I got no bitter recollections. Oh, come now, Mr. Brady. Look, 
Shall we look, look at the record book? Suspended for writing fractions. Was it my fault? The failure of port brave bribe of the as frame, and the most recently the crowning touch of a lustrous career, life suspension for face fixing, toll stoping. I don't dope any horses, career shot. Roughly eight dollars in your jeans. I don't need you. It wouldn't be it won't be at any time at all. Two years' time, I'll be back up riding five or six winners a day. You drive a carriage with lovers in them. It, it, it through Central Park. Knock it off. No, you need me, Mr. Brady. In fact, you have you have desperate need of me. Knock it off. Where are you now? Ah, where are you now? Ah, you fake. I need you like a, I need ammonia. Like I need a fractured leg. That's how I need, I need you. Who do you think you're talking to anyway? Who do you think you're talking to? I make one phone call to Henchek. One phone call. In an hour's time, I'll be on my way pronto, right co, riding in the warm sun. Two years' time, I'll be back here riding silks. Why do you call, don't you call Mr. Henchek? Go ahead, give him a buzz. I'll show you, I'll make you eat your ro- every rotten word. Oh, there's a greedy Henchek here, there. I want to talk to him, this and this. Hello, Henchek, it's Grady. What's this, what's what's to be surprised about? You had your had your boat race, so you made your pile. I'm down to my last eight bucks. I figure it's time that Brady got his. See, I figure that with Henchek. You're very preferensive. Well, that's the breaks. They take, they never give. What do you know? Ride a wheel and take gas. Look, I could nickel and dime, or I could buy and sell him a year ago. I don't need him. I don't need you. I don't need nobody. I was a big man once. I could be big again. Wait and see. You know, it was just a year ago. We were stuffing around, driving right around the country. We wore nice, shiny shoes, lion clothes. Tip big. Then you had some conversation then. Conversation then, Mr. Grady. Conversation? The fact you are a little runt. The unpleasant realisation that all your life you had to stand on tiptoe to look on at Look at every what's ever around you. I wish you were there here right now. Hear me. I wish you were here right now. Just look down under your feet, Mr. Brady. You know what you mean? What do you want? You want to be respected. I've been a horse, your man, and a ground your half point. Shut up, shut up. You don't even stand easy, Mr. Brady. Easy does it, easy does it. Now get it. Now we get it to the moment of truth of ultimate. Now you'll p- hit pay dirt, ground kid. You get whoever you want. What do you make me whatever I want? Tell me what it is you want. What anything else on earth? This is the moment. This this is it. What is it you want, Mr. Grady? Name it's it's yours. What I want? What I want? I want to be the biggest, hear me? Yeah, that's what I want to be want. I want to be the biggest. I want to be big. Damn it, I want to be big. Have a good rest, Mr. Grady. Yeah. Yeah, and I had a good rest. This is wild, this is wild. Look, what do you see? What is this? Am I dreaming? It's a dream. Oh, dream. Oh, come on. Now, look. Touch the dresser. Yeah. Yeah, I touched it. What's... Yeah, that's it. New touch. Overhead bit. A touch overhead beam. Yeah. Oh, these are very solid objects. Width, height, thickness, reality. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what is this? You had your heart's desire. Did you ask for two hour escape from my Fulvius? He wanted, he wanted stature, Mr. Brady. He wanted size. He wanted view from a long way up, long way out. Yeah, I wanted size. You wanted to be big. You look at yourself, you're big. You're Mr. Big. Hercules, the most suitable thing, suitable thing since Bull Bainian. You don't have any complaints that you want to trot, trot to out, do you? Complaints? Do I have complaints? No, I have no complaints. Hey, you know what this calls for? It's cause for celebration. Hey, look, hey, here, don't you, you drink, don't you? Ah, you drink, go ahead. You're my guest. Yeah, well, here's money to I. Too bad you couldn't join me, th- th- this with me. I'm joining you, I'm joining you. Believe me, I'm feeling the hot little ripples just as you do. You do, huh? Well, you stay right then there, there. You stay there. Gonna have some fun, you understand? Gonna have some fun. Oh, see? Oh, careful. You don't want to go through the floor. Hey, Mr. Brady, Mr. Brady, yeah. Like you do, do you? I love it, I love it. 
you know what's going going to do what I'm going to do now. I'm gonna take make a call, a telephone a call. There's someone very special, a very special, very special girl. Then she hears about this she's gonna flip. Really, pal? Are you that attractive? Tell me, does size matter mean that much? You bet your bottom dollar it does. You know, she used to lean over and pat me on the head. Hello, honey. Hello, doll. You know who it is? This is Grady. Yeah. Wait a minute, honey. Don't brush me off. This is your ex meal ticket. An eight course meal ticket. At that. Now listen to this, honey. I'm big. I said that. I am B I G. Big, big, big. I don't know. I may be six, seven feet, eight feet tall. Don't know Lakers will be scouting me any day now. Hey, wait a minute. You don't talk to me like that. You don't talk to me like that, I said. You heard what is that what I what I'll slap your face off. You were no good any cat. That's great. And that was wonderful. You managed to flex your muscles in the most impressive fashion. This rate you're going you're going women all the way will be flogging that you do no doubt. Yeah, I got I can call it twelve girls, maybe sh- just because I struck out this time, I could kill twelve girl called twelve girls prettier and nicer than that that one. You don't believe me, do you? So far you have a press f- on me. Well I will, I will. Yeah. What do you mean too loud, huh? How's that, Mac? Is that, that better good? Hmm, that's what time. Yeah, yeah. I'd be expecting his call, thank you, yeah. He knows the number, doesn't he? Fine, fine, thanks. What's, what was all that about? That was a fellow trying telling me a lawyer's going to call me for the creation commission. Hey, tell me who you are. My information. You don't have to very much imagination, Mr. Grady. Wait a minute. Who are you? What What are you? I mean, what is all this alter ego jazz? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Grady. I try to make it as simple as possible. I have faith every man what he looks at himself. You gently find me in the bottom of the barrel. I have strength dredged up in desperation. In the last, on the last grass, that's supposed to be clear, no? Huh? You know nothing. Nothing understand. Oh, I'm something really, really I am something. In some cases, I'll get something very good. In some cases, depending upon the person I'm representing, I can work miracles. You do? I come from heroism. Sacrifice strength. Even better than that, I can emphasize every noble man. Yeah, man, you can, huh? Now, in your case, Mr. Brady, your comments were quite small. What do you mean, quite small? Your dreams were rather insignificant. Your aspirations fairly worth mentioning. I mean the same. If you asked, if you asked to win a canoe, W, W, and win it cleanly, I wanna, you would have been quite a moment, wasn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah. Dad would have been the greatest. Oh, if I told you that, you asked, asked to perform an act of heroism, let's say, You've been a qualified coach of negotiation. The respect you seek. These two would have been an exemplary, right? I suppose you've been all right, yeah. But if it is, it is, and it is, it is Mr. Grady. What was your heart's desire? Oh, well, I wanted, all I wanted was to be a big man. That's right, yes. Big in the sense that your hands could smother a telephone. Your face could go as short. It's reflection of the mirror. You're real cheap. I don't come cheap. All I wanted out of life was the fact. I could walk down the street and people not stare at me like a freak. Not, but not, I'm not cheap, buddy. I don't come cheap. I got my heart to die. Yeah, Mr. Newman. Yes, sir. Really? Do you say you? Thank you, sir. You don't know how much this means to me. Thank the members of the board and thank everyone who went to back for me. Will you? Just thank them. Thank, tell them how much I appreciate it. Thanks very, very much, Mr. Newman. And listen, but tell everyone, don't worry about me anymore. I play it straight. I mean, no worries. Cut and dry, do you understand? The gradient up, the worries are over, right? Thanks, Mr. Newman. And I think everyone for me. Right, goodbye. What do you think now, loudmouth? Everything's going my way. I'm a phone call, and you're a top dog, huh? You know who that was? A race commission, a lot of owners signed a position. They want me to run again, do they understand that? Well, ready to run again. I'm going to run again. What's so funny, huh? What's so funny about me riding? I'll wait. Oh, I'm going to wait a minute. I'm too big. I'm too big. I'm too big. Can't ride. Wait a minute. Can't ride. Can't wear my clothes. I'm too. I'm too big. I'm too big. Hear me. I'm too big. I can't ride. No, please, please make me small. Please. I never ask for anything again. 
Please make me small. Please, oh God. Neil, you are small, Mr. Brady. You see, every time you run an honest frank race, you run, that's when you're a giant. Right now, you just don't, now they just don't come any smaller. People, name is Grady, 10 feet tall, a slightly sodded off short. Should have a bad breed of humans of race horses. Fortunately for Mr. Brady, you learned it too late. That you didn't, you don't measure size with a ruler. You don't measure height with a yardstick. You never judge a man by how tall he looks in a mirror. Giant as he, as he, as he does. You can take, you can make a preliminary bet of this win, place a show, in or out of the Twilight Zone.